boom, ba doo, ba dee dee dee, boom. Oh, Lulu, little Lulu, little Lulu, with freckles on your skin, always in and out of trouble, but mostly always in. Using dad's necktie for the tail of your kite, using mom's lipstick for the letters you write. Little Lulu, little Lulu, there's no one quite as smart. Doesn't matter what you're doing, you're doing it with your heart. Shiny curls are dancing, there's a sparkle in your eye. When can we look forward to your next surprise? What a surprise! Oh, the clock says 7.30, it's really after 10. Looks like Lulu's been repairing it again. Though you're wild, Why? you know it's true, Lou. And you're very hard to tame. Little Lulu, we love you, Lou, just the same, the same. Little Lulu, we love you, Lou, just the Boys are usually too shy to tell girls they like them, which is weird considering all the gross things they aren't too shy to do around us. So here's how to recognize the signs. If a boy looks at you during a test at school, he likes you, or he wants some answers. If you ask a boy something and he looks at his shoes, he really likes you or he stepped in something. And if he hangs around you going, he, 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 he likes you a lot, or you should get away fast. But if he throws spitballs at you and puts a snake in your lunchbox, he absolutely adores you, and he wants to get married. Or he's your brother. Boys Clubhouse. Step right up, folks. See Tubby get shot out of a cannon. Only five cents. Well, I'll even pay ten cents to see that. Yeah, let's go. Come one, come all. All this is gonna do, Tubby, is give you a splinter. This is a piece of high technology, Lulu. And if it doesn't work, we'll give you your money back. Deal. Fake! Introducing Cannonball Boy. Watch as he climbs into the cannon. <laughs> How can they shoot him out if he can't get in? What could be more thrilling than seeing someone get shot out of a cannon? Popcorn! One more crack out of you, Alvin! Uh, uh, ahem! Three, two, one, contact! Wowee! We have liftoff! There he goes, brave cannonball boy, sailing through the sky, through the clouds, flying, flying! Falling! Falling! I didn't see anything. Did you see anything? No, you just have untrained eyes. He's moving too fast for you to see. Brave old Tubby. He didn't even take a parachute. I didn't see a thing. Fakers! Fake! I bet Tubby never left that barrel. Okay, Tubby Tompkins, come out. I know you're in there. Gosh, he's not in here. Careful, Lulu. We don't want you to get shot into space, too. Hi, folks. Here I am. Boy, I thought I'd never come down. What a show. Even Lulu couldn't believe her eyes. That's because I didn't see anything. Well, let me tell you, it's a good thing I landed on something soft. What? A pile of leaves? In a swimming pool? What? I landed here. We don't believe it. We want to see you do it again. Fake! Anything you want, Lulu. But it'll cost you another nickel. Contact! And there he goes again. <gasps> Where? I didn't see anything that time either. Tubby never left that barrel, and I'm going to prove it. <gasps> oh, I do hope Tubby's all right. Guess I went straight up that time. 
We can do it again if you want. No way. You're not getting another nickel out of us. Do it again. I still can't figure out how those boys did that trick. <laughs> uh, we're gonna make a fortune with this stunt, fellas. Nobody will ever figure out how we do it. Hey, how's about another round on me? You mean on Lulu, Annie, and Alvin. <laughs> <laughs> so it is a trick. If I'm right, we're gonna find a hole in the ground and a tunnel. Hey, there's no tunnel here. I'm gonna get to the bottom of this mystery if it costs me my last nickel. There goes Tubby Cannonball Boy shooting across the sky. I still don't see anything. Don't worry, girls. We can do it again as soon as he lands. Tubby's taking an awful long time getting back. Maybe Tubby got stuck in a chimney. Maybe he's suffocating. Maybe Tubby got stuck in the tunnel. Shh! He never got stuck before. That was before he drank three sodas. <laughs> Where's the trap door? Where's the tunnel? Oh. <laughs> oh. Hi, folks. <laughs> so there is a tunnel after all. Tunnel? What tunnel? There's no tunnel. Tubby's resting. His mother told him never to go flying after a meal. Fake! Fake! Whoa! Uh -huh. Huh? Alvin! Alvin! Whoop! Uh, fellas, we got a problem. Ha! I was right! <sighs> Thanks, Annie. We didn't find the tunnel before because it was hidden by a trap door. And Tubby didn't find it because I moved the cannon. Well, I suppose you want your money back. Oh, no! It was a very good trick. We enjoyed every minute of it. Hey! I want to see you get shot out of the cannon again. It'll only cost you two cents now, Alvin. This is supposed to be a love story. Listen. He had a crush on her. She was swept off her feet. She fell head over heels. But in the end, she had a broken heart. A broken heart? How? Sounds like she should have ended up in the hospital. Last week, I could tell my parents were really excited about our trip to the zoo because they kept saying things like, Turkey, nice jaguar, what a weasel, bunch of cows, and it's a jungle out there. Well, we never did make it to the zoo after all. Dad said there were too many animals on the road. Mother's birthday? But Father, the nose is all busted off. Broken centuries ago. Such history. Looks to me like you walked into a door. Antiques look better when they're broken, son. It means they're old. And your mother will love it even more when she sees the price tag. Wow. 
Lulu and Annie. Oops! Shooting arrows through our windows. Why, they could have broken something. Like an antique nose. <laughs> I guess we'll have to ask Wilbur for our arrow back. I've found your arrow, Lulu. Come in. Gee, this is really nice of you, Wilbur. And I thought you'd be mad. Lulu, that looks a lot like your dad. If his nose fell off... That's what happened. Your arrow wrecked Father's precious statue. Oh, Wilbur, I'm sorry. But where's... the... the... nose? And look how much Father paid for it. Golly! Six dollars! It's more than six dollars. Look at all those zeros. Everybody knows zeros mean nothing. Okay, six dollars it is. But you better pay up or Father will be really mad. Where am I gonna get six dollars? Well, I've got most of the nose here. Maybe we could glue it back on. Or we could make a new nose. Oh, I can't make noses. We need a model. Hey, that statue did look an awful lot like my dad. So we'll use him for a model. Uh -huh. What a strange dream. Martians were trying to steal my nose. You could trick me, huh? Oops. <gasps> You've ruined my father's birthday present for my mother. And she just pulled up outside. Quick, glue it, glue it together. I can't wait to see it, dear. Uh, mother, um, happy birthday. Why, thank you, sweetums. We're about to unveil your mother's present right now. Father showed me your present this morning. He's really outdone himself this time. What? Oh, let me see. Let me see. Ta-da! Easy, Father. Oh, oh. oh, I just love it. Finally, a piece of modern sculpture in this house. I was so worried you were going to get me another broken antique. Well, I'm glad you like it, dear. Like it? I love it. I'm going to invite my RLACC friends over right now to have a look. Ah, uh, the Rich Ladies Auxiliary Collectors Club. Yeah! <laughs> Won't they be envious? Hard to tell whether she was laughing or screaming. With what we did to that statue, probably both. Come on, Annie. We gotta put that statue back together right. Well, we came as soon as we heard, darling. My Harold won't buy anything under 500 years old. Dear, could you prepare the unveiling? Oh, what have you done? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Van Snob. I just couldn't leave it like it was. And I'll get you the six dollars, I promise. Hurry! Uh, do it like it was before. All sticking out, and man, with that funny nose. Hey, that's my dad's nose. Wilbur, stall your mother. Uh, ladies, are you sure you're ready for a truly modern artistic experience? Of course we are, dear. Uh, oh, but not everybody can handle art that is so modern. Whoa! Oh, it's the most oh, exciting thing I've seen in years. Years. Oh, it's oh, it's so awesome. Awesome. Do it here. Oh, it's so wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Here, girls, a little something to keep quiet. Or uh, rather, for your great sculpture. Six bucks for breaking an old statue and gluing it together all crazy. That wasn't crazy, Annie. That was art. It's grown-ups who are crazy. Ever wonder what grown-ups really mean when they talk? 
Well, wonder no more. It's all in the grown up dictionary. Ah, here's a good one. Oh, no, I couldn't possibly eat another bite means, please keep filling my plate. And this one, I really must start exercising again, which means, there, I said it, now I don't have to do it. Oh, and this one's really sneaky. That's enough, you've had quite enough dessert. That really means, hee hee hee, go to bed, the rest is mine. hair. Gee, Dad, who are all those good-looking fellows with Mom? Lulu, those good-looking fellows are me. But you don't have hair, Dad. Did you think I was born, bald Lulu? Isn't everyone? <sighs> I used to have a lot of hair, but I lost it all about the same time you were born. <sighs> what I wouldn't give to have hair again. Trying out my new chemistry set. I'm making, um, well, I don't know what I'm making yet. Whoa! Pretty neat, Tubby. But do you think we can invent something that could grow hair on my father's head? I bet we could. Let's check out the fridge for ingredients. We definitely need some eggs because they're good for your hair. And flowers will help, because all good shampoos smell like flowers. And broccoli, because if we don't use it now, I'm going to have to eat it for dinner. Shoot, kitty. Ugh. We're in business. Let's surprise him. surprised when he wakes up and finds his head's turned blue your dad's head turned blue lulu what did you do i didn't do anything tubby you put it on his head oh we gotta get it off <laughs> what's going on <gasps> george what what is it your head it's blue my head it is blue it's blue. Lulu Moffat and Tubby Tompkins. Oh. What is going on here? Huh? Uh, uh, Mr. Moppet's head is blue? Oops, I can see that. Now, what are you two trying to hide? Let's see your hands. I guess you could say you caught us blue-handed. <laughs> if I can't wash it off, I'll have to cover it. Bring all of it upstairs, Tubby. Okay, Mom. Now down the drain it goes. Oh, oops. Oh. Sorry, Kitty. Boy, I don't see why everyone's so upset. At least Dad didn't turn green. Tonic works! It actually works! Hair? 
How do we get some of that hair? Well, we have to make some more hair tonic first. Then let's get over to Tubby's house so you can whip up a new batch. This is great. We'll give you a lift. Two drops, uh, one drop. We gotta get it right, Tubby. Ow, careful of my hair, Lulu. Sorry, Tubby. Hey, does it seem like our hair is still growing? Oh, you poor kitty. Boy, I wonder if we'll win one of those noble prizes for this. Or even better, a new bike! Lulu, Tubby, come up here! My hair won't stop growing. Forget the tonic, work on an antidote. I don't want that much hair. Let's get out of here. What we make has to do the opposite of what the tonic's already done. So instead of growing hair, it has to get rid of it, right? Then all we have to do is put in the opposite of what we put in before. Okay, uh, what's the opposite of eggs? A plucked chicken! And the opposite of sweet-smelling flowers? Is stinky extra old cheese. Now the opposite of yesterday's broccoli is... Today's broccoli. This is it. <gasps> there. Now to test it. We've done it, Dad. Hold on. Yahoo! I'm bald. Bald as an egg. Bald as a melon. Bald as a cue ball. I'm back to normal. Thank you, Lulu. Thank you, Tubby. Gee, Dad. You look better without hair anyways. Come back here, kitty. <laughs> Being bald isn't so bad. But if there was only a way, I could lose some of this weight. Hmm. One time at a fancy restaurant, I got this really bad waiter. He asked if I'd like the chef's salad. Why would I want to share someone's salad, I asked. Don't you have any brains? And you know what? They did. Boiled or stewed. Then I noticed that I had three forks. Well, I didn't want the waiter to make me share anything, so I swapped them all for dessert spoons and ordered a huge chocolate mousse so I could eat the body and save the antlers for the morning. Sort of like an Easter bunny. But what about your main course, the waiter asked me. When I told him I was best in math, he walked away. And he calls himself a waiter. He never even waited for me to finish my order. instrument. She says, it's best if you start when you're young like Mozart. By the time he was four, he was a musical genius. Well, sure. But in his day, all the good TV shows hadn't been invented. Anyway, she told me to pick an instrument I'd like to play. Well, I thought about the piano, but nah, I'm always losing my keys. The French horn, I don't even speak the language. How am I supposed to play it? So I finally decided on the perfect instrument for someone who doesn't like practicing. The bagpipes! They're great, because nobody can tell what you're playing, and they usually tell you to stop long before you're supposed to. It's a good thing we're building our rocket ship at my top secret spot. Yeah! We don't want anyone finding out about it. Like spies, Lulu and Annie. Hello, boys. Lulu and Annie. How'd you find us? 
Everyone knows about your top secret spot, Tubby. What is this thing? Ha! Huh. Don't you know a rocket ship when you see one? I guess not, Tubby. Well, this one is specially made to shoot us to Mars. Cancel the trip to Mars, Tubby. Looks like you're going tree climbing instead. Give me a hand, Iggy. Huh? <laughs> there. We're hmm. aimed at Mars. Can we come too, Tubby? Hmm. I have to check with mission control. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Lulu. But you have to get some stuff we'll need to explore Mars. Important supplies like sandwiches. Yippee! Oh, boy! We get to do some real make-believe space exploring. <laughs> Hurry! Let's blast off before the girls get back. These might come in handy. I heard there are canals on Mars. I can't wait to swim on another planet. Ready for takeoff, Commander Annie? Aye, aye, Captain Lulu. <gasps> they left without us. Wait a minute. This isn't supposed to be real. This is pretend. <sighs> we waited a whole hour and they didn't come back. Mars must be really far away if it takes that long to get back. Huh? It's from the boys. It says... We're on Mars. It sure is swell here. Tell our moms we won't be home for supper. Gosh. Help. We're being attacked by Martians. Get the police. <gasps> Help. Police. Our boys are being attacked. Police. <laughs> Officer McNabb. McNabb. Officer McNabb. Quick. The boys are being attacked. Attacked? Oh, goodness. Wow. Where are the boys, Lulu? On Mars. The boys built this rocket ship, and at first we thought it was just make-believe, but they must have made it to Mars. Look! I think the boys are pulling your legs, young ladies. <laughs> the boys got us good this time. What a joke! They really went to the cops for help. <laughs> Hurry up and clear all this stuff away before Lulu and Annie get back. I thought we were going to play together. But they just wanted to play a trick on us. Well, I'm good at that game, too. Hey, fellas! Thank goodness you got back. I was so worried. We tried to get Officer McNabb to help, but he didn't believe you really went to Mars. What happened? Well, right after we landed on Mars, a Martian came hopping out of a crater looking for us. So I jumped on its back. <clears throat> so did I. <clears throat> Me too. <clears throat> oh, you brave, brave boys. What if those Martians come looking for you? Oh, I'm going home to hide. We got her again. So fun. Okay, Annie, you're on. A flying saucer! I saw a flying saucer! They flew through the air and I saw a Martian get out! Boy, we really scared them. Now they're starting to imagine things. Ready for a blast off? Aye, aye, aye sir! Yikes! Look! Nah. This looks like... Don't move, human. <laughs> Stay away! Relax, Tubby. It's just me and Annie. You should have seen your faces. What you doing scaring us like that? What a trick! I thought that's the game you wanted to play. Well, not anymore, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, come on. Let's go to Mars for real this time. Oh, boy! Ready for blast off, Captain.
Captain Tubby. Contact. Wow, Tubby, this feels so real. That's because it is real. Gosh! All that rocket needed was a little z bus to plutonium nastrate. Actually, this sandwich could use some too. Ever notice that no one's happy with the type of hair they've got? Like my mom. She hates her hair so much, she pays someone to fix it every week. And my friend Annie, she doesn't like her straight hair. She wishes it was curly. Me, I have curly hair, and I wish it was straight. And my dad, he's the only one I know who's got nothing to complain about. My friend Annie has a cat named Dash, because it has a dash of white at the tip of its tail. It's a nice cat, but I think it's a little weird in the head. You see, the last time I was over at Annie's, I saw Dash drinking out of the toilet. Annie said cats do that all the time because the water's cool in there. What I'm wondering is, how does Annie know that? Inside. And when I came out, it was gone. Are you sure you can find it? Sure, I'm sure. Of course I'm sure, because I'm the spider. Oh, brother, not the spider again. That's right. Just like a spider, I spin a web to catch thieves. I don't see a web. But I see a footprint. I don't. That's because you have an untrained eye, not like the spider, a master of disguises. Well, Mr. Master, you don't have a disguise. Good point. I gotta get one. This disguise is perfect. Your dad will think I'm looking the other way so I can catch him off guard. What do you mean, my dad? He's got nothing to do with Alvin's drop. Your dad took it, and I'll prove it. Lulu's dad took it? Alvin, wait! He's taking a nap! He's always taking a nap. So you think if my dad's shoe fits the footprint you found, it proves he took Alvin's drum? Of course. It's elementary. Only there's no shoes here. This calls for drastic measures. Drastic? You mean crazy. Come on, Alvin. Let's get out of here. My dad's gonna wake up for sure. <laughs> Hey, come back with my shoe! Stop! Huh? 
kind of weird creature. I've got to get my eyes checked. Phew. That was close. Too close, Tubby. You're gonna get us in big trouble. Yeah, good thing I'm in disguise. So if the shoe can't come to the footprint, then the footprint will go to the shoe. How do I let you talk me into these things, Tubby? Huh? <gasps> We're safe. Wow, it sure is fun when Tubby's the spider. Dad's old marching band uniform. He used to play the drum. Hey, this gives me an idea. No, Tubby, Dad'll go crazy if anything happens to that. Lulu, this drum will crack this case once and for all. Ugh. Hmm. Now listen, this is what we have to do. When I find out what's going on... <gasps> if anyone steals my dad's drum, Tubby, you'll be sorry. That's just what's gonna happen. Just watch. Gosh! My dad does have Alvin's drum. I thought he would. You see, he figures the little one isn't so bad after all. I can't believe you were right. Yep. Alvin was beaten on it all this time, and your dad couldn't take his nap. <gasps> I might have known you were oh. behind this, Tubby Tompkins. You won't get away from me that easily. Oops! <clears throat> oh, no. I didn't want to break Alvin's drum. I just couldn't stand the noise he was making. Uh, Dad, that's your drum. My old marching drum? I guess my dad will get his nap after all. Dad drove me to school the other day, and boy did he get mad when he got stuck behind this student driver. So he drove fast, hit the brakes, got really close, and swerved in and out of traffic, yelling, this guy doesn't know how to drive. He's going fast, hitting the brakes, getting really close, and swerving in and out of traffic. That's when I noticed that all the other people driving were mad, too, honking and yelling and waving their fists at the student driver. Even the teacher in the car was yelling. That's when I figured out why there are so many bad drivers on the road. I mean, once people graduate from driving school and get their license, they must hit the road looking for revenge. to impress Gloria. It sickens me. Me too, Tubby. Tubby? Here, ma'am. Allow me to help you across this dangerous intersection. But I... It's no problem at all. Helping others is huh? what I do best. <gasps> no, no. <laughs> no need to thank me. My pleasure, ma'am. But I didn't want to cross the street. Uh-huh. Boys. My roller skating skills are sure to impress Gloria. Hi, Gloria! Oh. It 
you're borrowing my roller skates just so you can show off to Gloria, I'm taking them back. What? What do I have to do to get Gloria to notice me? Oh. How about getting a gold medal for bravery? Like that guy who saved a girl from the burning building. Wow. A gold medal for bravery. That'd do it for sure. But who could I save? You could save Gloria from drowning. Nah, uh, she might catch cold. What about Lulu? <laughs> You could save her from the rapids. Ouch! Ouch! Oh, no. Ouch! Uh, yeah! Lulu, I could save her just before she hits the rapids on a boat. I'd be a hero for sure. But how are you going to get her in a boat heading for the rapids? Hello, my golden swallow. You are a vision of loveliness today. What do you want to borrow, Tubby? Nothing. I just wanted to know if you'd like to go rowboating with me, my little white speckled dove. No way, Tubby. Last time we went rowboating, my arms were sore for days. <laughs> Why, I'll row, my, uh, yellow-bellied sapsucker. <laughs> okay, Tubby. You sit and relax, my rose petal. Everything's under control. <sighs> Here, let me shade those delicate eyeballs from the sun. Neat. Uh oh. Your father's guitar. Oh, that's okay. I didn't know how to play it, anyways. What are you looking for, Tubby? Look! It's a lake monster! Huh? Oh, my mistake. It was only a submarine. There aren't any submarines in lakes. Uh-oh! I dropped the oars. Don't worry, Tubby. I'll swim to shore and get help. No! I mean, you'll get your dress wet. I wore my swim trunks. Wow, that's pretty lucky. Hold still. I'll be back to rescue you in a sec. Hurry, Tubby. The rapids are coming up. Don't worry, Lulu. I'll save you. <laughs> We're gonna need a witness so I can get that medal. Iggy, go find Officer McNabb. Make sure she doesn't really go down the rapids, Tubby. Poor Tubby's probably really worried, and I'm drifting to shore on my own. Just grab on, Lulu, and I'll pull you in. Hey! Oops. Sorry, Lulu. Tubby! Ah! Wow! What a ride! Yeah, too bad about the waterfall. Waterfall? waterfall? Officer McNabb! Lulu's in terrible danger! Lead on! Now we've really got to save her. Hold on, Lulu! <laughs> Tubby! Right this way, Officer McNabb! <gasps> Hold on there, Tubby. <laughs> You'd better let me handle this. Hey! Find your own person to rescue! <laughs> Whoa! You'll get a gold medal for this, Lulu. Hiya, Lulu. I got you something for saving us. Oh, Tubby. How sweet. <gasps> Getting your parents to buy you a puppy can be tough. So here's Lulu's guide to getting a dog. Number one, don't ask for a dog. Ask your parents for a lizard, a boa constrictor, a tarantula. And by the time you get to fruit bat, they'll want you to have the cutest dog in the pound. Number two, 
tie a string around one of your stuffed animals and take it out for a drag around the block. This works best on a sunny Saturday when all your neighbors are out mowing the lawn. And if these don't work, pull out all the stops. Tell them you want a baby brother. Before you know it, that dog will be yours. <laughs> Thank you.